Good morning. I'm at AQS Fall Paducah, and I'm here with Kathy Wiley, who won our Genomia America Best of Show Award. And isn't this fun because the people chose your quilt? It's didn't totally they? fun. I love it when people come up and go, I voted for you. <laughs> it sort of allowed. Um, the, everybody to enter into it. Like they have a piece of it, you know. Well, and so you knew your quilt was quality because the judges made it a first place winner, well, right? Well, so they, yes, yes I guess. they did. They did. <laughs> yes. And so then from there, it was open to the public and they got to choose the Genome America Best of Show. What an honor for you. Oh, I know, I know, I still can't believe it. And so have you won a Best of Show award at other shows? I have in Canada, okay. but I haven't in the US. Okay, mm. well, it's a beautiful quilt, and now we're gonna talk about it. Okay. You know, everybody wants to know, how did you make it, and what did you do that was different, and what made yours rise to the top of the heap? So let's start with, how did you design the quilt? So my theme is time. So I started off with this idea of a clock, which is, uh, you know, divided into 12, but there's also 12 months of the year. So each hour of the clock is also a month of the year. So to portray that, I used monthly birth flowers and birth stones. Okay, so like on this one, this mm -hmm. would be June. That would be June. All right. And I think that might be a smoky quartz. I'm not sure what they, I can't remember okay. what they all are. To tell and you they the all truth. have a lot of different ones too, so yes. you got to choose. So I could choose. Uh, yes. And then um, I worked on the quilt in quarters. Um, so there is a seam line that runs up the, the middle. And anything that went over the seam line, I, would, I couldn't applique until I got it all done. So I kind of created this framework uh, for the medallion that stayed the same for every single month. And then I would just change which flowers I was going to put in to portray that month. So that's how you got to add more color to it then, didn't Well, yes. You? And that was a challenge because I, flowers come in so many different <laughs> colors. But I had to be really careful to try to balance the color and not have, you know, a whole Too bunch much of red, red in red one, in one place. Spot, yeah. So I was trying to, okay, we got red there, we got red there. And I really found like the white was what popped out when I was looking at it. So every month has white mm -hmm. and it alternates from the big flower to the small flower, the big flower to the small flower. So I was hoping that would unify it when it came together as a whole. Well, it did that. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly did that. Well, and so then, I'll tell you the, the, the feature that I like a lot is all of these little tiny circles. And so tell us how you did this because you told me you applicate every one of those down. I did. I applicate them all down by hand, but they were turned first. So um, I cut out little. The, the shape of the circle that I wanted out of um, fusible interfacing. And Did then you I, use a hole punch to do that? Well, I used a hole punch for the holly berries way up here in December. Okay. And that worked out quite well, but I didn't really want to keep doing that. So that was my um, justification to buy a cutting machine. Oh. <laughs> so the cutting machine, you can just punch in, you know, I want 80 five millimeter circles and you put the interfacing on the cutting mat and you press cut and, and it, it goes cuts them all out. <laughs> yep. And then I'd take my tweezers and I'd peel them off there and then I'd iron them on my fabric and cut I actually had the cutting machine cut the fabric out too. And then to turn it I used uh, Appliquick rods and uh, glue. So that just gave me uh, additional level of precision to turn it, get the shape formed before I sewed it onto the background. Well, and now I know people probably think you took like two or three stitches to stitch those on, but how many <laughs> stitches does it take in one little circle? Well, it's more like 10 to 12 because we really have to enclose all that seam allowance inside the circle. And it also keeps your circle more round yes. when you put in more stitches. Exactly, exactly. So if I didn't quite get it right, before I sewed it down, then the stitching, I could kind of finish the job. Okay, then tell us, what did you do when you did all these flowers and stuff to applique those? The same um, kind of well, method? Well, um, I would say this quilt's 80% needle turn applique. So I'm gonna use Appliquick when a shape is really small or really detailed. So a flower like these Lily of the Valleys with oh, those sure. tiny little inside points, yes. I would have made that with Appliquick. 
but the rose I would have done with needle turn. This uh, honeysuckle, that was apple quick. So oh, I kind of mix and match mixed depending and on the shape that I was trying to do. Well, and you know what? For our viewing audience out there, that's just really justification for learning different techniques because you never know when you might need to use exactly. a different technique to I be able totally to do agree. those tiny little pieces. Yep, yep. Well, then how about the quilting? Uh, so I did the quilting uh, after all the applique was done. There's actually two layers of batting in some areas. So I put that layer under first, quilted it to my uh, first layer of batting, and then I cut away where I didn't want it. So just these uh, raised areas. And right. then I layered it with my second layer of batting, and I quilted it on my home sewing machine. And so did you use wool batting? I would have used wool batting, except uh, as far as I could find, it didn't come in black, and I wanted to use black batting. I think you're right. So I used um, Hobbs Heirloom two layers because I could get it in black. Yes. Yeah. And the reason you would use black in a quilt this dark is so that those fibers don't migrate just in to case. the top. Just you in case. You never know. Exactly. Okay, so then now tell me about the border because it's gorgeous. Thank you. Well, I got to the point of had the medallion, I had the corners. And I had this idea that I could also include celebrations as a way of portraying time. But when I saw how it all came together, I thought, no, we got enough going on. It's time to call it done. Uh, so all I wanted to do for that final edge was frame it. So I just tried to repeat um, color and shape um, just to hopefully uh, just give it a, a finished edge. And you just really repeated some of the elements I, from I, the center. That's totally didn't you? what I did. And I had this idea of this, this royal blue fabric that repeats throughout. It's kind of the anchoring fabric, I think, color. Um, I had this idea of it being the outside edge and having applique weaving over and under it. And I even toyed with the idea of it being the final outside edge and somehow, you know, tucking it under there. Um, but as I was working on it, and I always saw it with black on the other side, in the end, I decided to leave a little bit of black around the outside edge. And I figured when people saw it hanging, they'd see it hanging on black anyways. So it would yes. just give the effect of that being the final outside edge without it actually being that. Well, it is, it is a stunning quilt and certainly deserving of the best of show. Thank you so and much. And it's even more important, I think, because the judges chose it as a first place and then the public chose it well, as the such, Genomia Bear Such an best incredible show. honor, and I'm so thankful. So, all right, now you win a big prize with that. This is a $20,000 prize. Yes. Do you have plans for that? Well, we sort of started talking about it, but we haven't really had too much time. <laughs> I'd really like to take my husband on a trip. I think that would be a, a really nice way to uh, commemorate it. But it's pretty funny because uh, we're in the middle of doing a kitchen renovation, so his idea is, oh, okay, goes, good, we'll pay for some, for some kitchen cabinets. <laughs> and a friend of mine, she actually was sitting here last year, texted me, don't let your husband spend it on cabinets. <laughs> <laughs> she knew where that was going to go, didn't she? Well, congratulations again. Thanks. And I hope that you've enjoyed learning a little bit about all the de details that Kathy has put into this beautiful quilt.